We'll reconvene our regular uh, October 26th meeting. It's um, 2 11 p.m. October 31st. All commissioners are present except Ferrero, Montanola, and Chairman Johnson. First and only matter on the agenda is GPA docket 2401. Thank you, Mr. Chair, commissioners. This matter comes before you on GPA's petition for approval of the property insurance contract for FY 2024 with four one-year renewal options. The proposed contract that GPA would have with AM Insurance and its affiliates for property insurance would be for a one-year policy period beginning November 1st, 2023 to October 31, 2024 with four one-year options to renew. So the present property insurance contract expires tomorrow. This petition requests approval of the property insurance policy for FY 2024. And uh, as you recall, you dealt with the casualty insurance policy on the 26th of October. The factual background with the property insurance is similar to that of the casualty insurance. In June of 2023, GPA issued its solicitation for property insurance under multi-step bid MSGPA 03923 for a term of three years with two options to renew for additional one-year periods. Uh, the solic solicitation sought insurance that uh, covers risks on all facilities of the system, including risks of loss of damage caused by or resulting from fire and from action of the elements, including loss from typhoons, earthquakes, floods, and tidal waves. Only one bid was received from AM Insurance through its underwriters for an annual premium of $7,973,858, which exceeded GPA's prior year premiums by roughly 20%. GPA canceled the property insurance procurement and conducted sole source negotiations with AM Insurance for the property insurance. Following sole source negotiations, GPA negotiated a slightly lower total annual premium of $7,873,858, which was $100,000 off the bid price. The contract term was revised from a three-year term with two additional one-year options to extend to a one-year term with four additional one-year options to extend. On October 26, the uh, CCU approved a property insurance policy offered by AM for a not to exceed annual premium of $7,873,858. However, the CCU was considering various options that it hoped could be implemented to reduce the annual premium cost. And those, those two options, well, they actually considered more than two, there were four, but but the ones that uh, they seem to be most comfortable with were first to increase the deductible for earthquake, flood, typhoon, and tsunami from $10 million to $20 million, and to reduce the sublimit for earthquake, flood, typhoon, and tsunami from $100 million to $50 million. For the increase of the deduct deductible, the monetary impact would be a reduction of 550,000 from the uh, annual premium for the insurance policy. For the reduction of the sublimit, the monetary impact would be 158,000. So the combined impact of uh, adopting these two options would be to reduce the annual premium by approximately 708,000. If the two options were implemented, the total annual property insurance premium for FY 2024 would be 7.1 million. <clears throat> 
So this matter clearly is subject to the contract review protocol. It requires PUC approval because it's a contract that exceeds 1.5 million and uh, will be over 39 million actually if the GPA exercised all of the um, extension years, the four extension years. So it does require approval. GPA has pointed out um, actually throughout our history, the history of the PUC in dealing with this issue, that it is required under its bond indenture at section 6.13 to carry property insurance of a scope and nature so that as that usually carried in the industry. And in addition, under that section, the board is required to secure and maintain property insurance on all facilities constituting the system against risks of loss or damage caused by or resulting from fire and also from action of the elements, including loss from typhoons, earthquakes, floods, and tidal waves, to the extent that such insurance is obtainable at reasonable cost. GPA as CFO John Kim provided me with the chart that I placed in paragraph 13 of my report, which show, shows the um, annual property insurance premiums over the last six years. Uh, it was higher in FY 2018, actually similar to what it was in FY 2023, but uh, steadily from 2019 on, the property insurance premium has increased substantially. The increase uh, from last year, last year the premium was $6,670,980. The proposed increase this year, the 7.8 plus million, would be an increase of 1.2 million. And if you look at it back from FY 2022, where the premium was 5788000 plus thousand, the increase would be over two million. And of course, we have to take into account that uh, with this particular policy, GPA could extend for four more years. So, so the increase in the premium would occur in each of those years. That, now, we don't know for sure, of course, what the premiums proposed would be in the next four years, but um, it seems it could be up to over $6 million. So from, from what I found, and I, I don't think my opinion has changed since the last meeting we have, there, there doesn't seem to be any information in the record justifying the premium increase or why it is so great for this fiscal year. Mr. Kim had testified at the last meeting of the PUC that when he wrote the insurance companies to request an explanation of the reason for an increase, he received no response. Um, the insurance adjuster for, uh, or the risk insurance adjuster for GPA suggested that there could be a couple of causes. One might be uh, Marwar, but Mr. Kim has indicated that uh, GPA did not make any claim for property insurance based on the damage caused by Typhoon Marwar. And in fact, GPA had, uh, I believe, about a $25 million loss and uh, 15 million of that was for transmission and distribution, which was not covered by the insurance. Uh, there was about 5 million for buildings. GPA ended up not making any claim at all for type of So it, it is my opinion that I, I could not say at this point in my mind that the uh, premium requested for FY 2024 is reasonable. And usually in the past, the commission has always used three criteria, reasonableness, prudency, and necessity. But as I've also, I think, recognized, the commission could well find that insurance is necessary, even where the cost might not be reasonable on the grounds of prudency and necessity. I think that both GPA and the CCU recognized that the proposed annual premium was too expensive and they they did take proactive steps to uh, reduce the cost of the premium 
As I previously stated, at their October 26th meeting, they discussed the various alternatives, including increasing the deductible, reducing the sublimit as a means to reduce the cost of insurance. After further discussions between CFO John Kim and GPA Insurance Risk Manager Bolton, I believe they determined that the two options approved by the CCU that I've referenced could be implemented, and that the implementation of these options would not risk adequate insurance coverage. And I did attach a copy of the email that Mr. Kim sent to me, which explains the history and the background of the negotiations. The contract for property insurance and the annual premium for property insurance in FY 2024, in my opinion, should be approved up to the amount of $7.1 million, and approval of the premium amount could be seen as prudent and necessary. Now, I'd have to add that I don't think it's the most desirable way in the world to reduce the coverage that's available for the people of Guam as a cost reduction. But here, there was no other option, I believe. I have stated that without the insurance, GPA would run the risk of loss for all the matters covered by the insurance. Now, I have to say, having reviewed what happened here, I give a lot of credit to GPA, to CFO, legal counsel, CCU, everyone, for what they did here. They weren't confronted with an easy situation, and they took proactive steps to analyze the policy and to figure out what they could do to reduce the cost, to make it more in the realm, or at least closer to a reasonableness standard. Now, I couldn't even necessarily conclude that 7.1 is reasonable, but as I said, because they need a policy and they have to have a policy, I think that they've done the best that they can, and at least this is a little closer in cost to what they had paid in previous years. I also thought about the fact that the PUC could perhaps assist GPA in looking at some alternatives. The PUC has already set up the self-insurance fund. It's been in effect for a number of years now. It has up to a maximum of $20 million. It is funded by a rate payer surcharge, so that'll be something that the commission will want to look at if it explores this matter further. But I am recommending that the PUC approve a new docket on self-insurance to explore the possible expansion of that program. It could consider increasing the $20 million limit, for example. It could expand matters for which GPA could use the self-insurance fund and to provide coverage under the fund for matters presently covered by casualty or property insurance. I did look back somewhat on the history of the self-insurance fund. I saw that in one matter, the PUC had approved, had improved paying for repairs to the CAPRS plant because the insurance funds didn't come timely. So it wasn't clear whether that would be an insurable loss, but nonetheless, the PUC deemed that it was covered under the self-insurance. So I think my point is that there's been flexibility with the self-insurance fund in the past. During COVID, the commissioners approved allowing $10 million to be used from the self-insurance fund to address certain issues of the under-recovery of LEAC. So the point is that there are a lot of possibilities with self-insurance. Again, the order that I prepared would authorize the establishment of such a docket. And I think then there would need to be input by GPA and its 
uh, risk manager about what's possible here, you know, what additional, if any, risks could be covered under the self-insurance as opposed to the uh, need for continuing insurance policies. So the recommendation I have is that the PUC approve a total annual property insurance premium for FY 2024 of 7.1 million and the award of the property insurance contract to AM Insurance. Exercised by GPA of any of the additional four renewal options for property insurance should be brought back to the PUC for prior approval. And I included that so that the, the PUC could continue to monitor the issue of costs of the insurance policy. PUC should also authorize the opening of a new docket on self-insurance for consideration of the expansion of the program. And in the order that I've, I've drafted and proposed, it would accomplish all those objectives and would authorize the opening of a new docket on self-insurance. Thank you. GPA, any comments? Good afternoon, uh, Commissioners. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, thank you. We fully support uh, Fred's recommendation, both on the issue of, of course, uh, approving insurance that is signed by tomorrow morning. And then secondly, the issue about looking at the ways to utilize self-insurance from other opportunities to make things hopefully uh, reduce that cost of the premium. Uh, yes, the, there is some light at the end of the tunnel because the biggest part of the insurance also is the cabers one and two, no? and that's going to go away in two years. So again, there's opportunities to <clears throat> the other plans ex other than uh, uh, PDA the nine, which actually is covered by its own insurance through the PMC at this point, uh, will uh, all the other plans are not as expensive, or the risk uh, of, of when damage occurs are not that large. So there's some opportunity over the next two after the next two years once you retire, cabers one and two. So that to me means there's more opportunities to look at where we can do some self insurance through higher deductibles. So. Is that for the very sick So, yes, please support uh, Fred's recommendation, and uh, I ask the PUC to please uh, approve this uh, docket today. Well, with this uh, new insurance, does it uh, cover anything additional than it does uh, today? Does it cover transmission, or is it the exact same thing, up 18%? I think it's the, it's the exact same thing. There's no additional for T and D or anything else. These are still the assets that we that we have uh, been covering. Uh, I don't think there's anything new that we added to it. Right? So, uh, it's it's the same as last year, uh, but we did. Uh, but previously we included the uh, digital diesel. We also included the um, the um, forty megawatts of renewable batteries. If that's including our assets. Also, uh, the PD7. Yeah, they're all in there. Commissioners, any comments? Doris? Uh, what is happening in the industry now? I'm sure that GPA is not the only one. What, uh, is uh, insurance just going up, skyrocketing everywhere? Have you talked to? Say some of your counterparts to find out if are they facing the same situations? Yeah, yes. My understanding is other agencies having similar problems. Uh, I heard that airport had they increased almost like close to 100 percent from prior year. But as an industry, my understanding is that the capacity has been shrinking because uh, from the insurance news I'm hearing is that the capacity is shrinking and the um, premiums are going down for properties. A lot of it has to do, in the U.S. side, um, has to do with all the natural disasters like flooding. Uh, last one we mentioned was um, fire mode and also the uh, floodings due to type of hurricane in California. But if we look at the weather damages um, of 2023, there's a quite a lot of everywhere. But that's what the articles from the Insurance Association usually say. 
But for Guam, uh, Guam is a little bit apart, uh, far away from it, so more Hawaii would be impacting Guam. Uh, last Last time we had a significant increase like this was back in uh, in Katrina, and uh, when that happened, the, the London market actually almost double size, increased their premiums by double. So we experienced that in previously back in, in 2007. So uh, what degree uh, does the bond indenture require? Because uh, as, as Fred was talking about self-insurance, does the bond indenture still require GPA to have some property insurance? Yes. So we did in, uh, inquire with John Wong, our uh, bond uh, attorney. What he says is there's a little cost, uh, at reasonable cost. He mentioned there's a cost called re obtain at reasonable cost. So it is, they say, uh, what he said is that you're required to have a property insurance but the threshold of coverage deductible is really upon the agency to decide that's reasonable within the industry. Um, the other one, the, the other thing he said is that um, GPA can do self-insurance. However, you need to have a, a risk uh, consultant come in and determine that the self-insurance is sufficient for your claims, future claims. So just to repeat, it was the numbers that Fred went over in his um, in his docket um, in his report rather from 2018 to 2023, and I just want to make sure um, DPA made no claims whatsoever in that six year period. Is that correct? Yes. The only time we made a claim was in 2015 when Cabris three and four had a file. So from 2018 to 2023, you know, this is of course hindsight. <laughs> Had we put them away the money that we paid for premiums, that would be over over 33 million dollars. So if, uh, if you were to put away whatever your annual premium you estimate and build up a fund, I guess, to cover, you would have it in in five to six years. <laughs> Uh, the money set aside for quote, any disaster uh, uh, self-insurance claim you have to pay yourself. And and so uh, going back, you were saying that the bond indenture requires that you have a consultant to look to make sure you're in the right track. Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Any other comments? In 2015, um, what did we receive from the insurance company uh, for the damages? Yes, for the settlement, we, I believe we settled about 125 million. Okay. Uh, was a global settlement. Okay. Sorry, global settlement. In other words, okay. uh, you explain that? Uh, it okay. just means that while they're going through the whole paperwork of each claim items, Mm -hmm. It says, here's $125 million, we'll wash our hands, we go different directions. So, we're looking at this for 2023 to 2024. It's approving it to allow for that one year, but then four years of option to renew, correct? And so, GPA would we would work to see the benefits of self-insurance versus continuing to carry the insurance coverage. Right? Okay. And in order for us to do that, I mean, it's not something we could do right now, Fred. It's something that we would have to look into with the self-insurance and how would that impact that self-insurance. Right now, with what's being proposed, uh, the risk manager, insurance risk manager, said that it is reasonable to not jeopardize uh, uh, our compliance to the bond injunction. Yes. Uh, correct. It's yes. Correct. Um, so there are Bolton, who is our risk uh, right. manager. They looked at it and said, because we have this is what we're reducing is typhoon coverage, not the fire. The fire is still the same. Um, at 200 million, we did have an option allowable if the premise we did bring it up to reduce it. 
hours will go for 200 minutes to 100 minutes. So the option one and two we're taking right now uh, is the, um, uh, the increasing the deductible from 10 million to 20 million dollars. And we did that because we have about 20 million dollars insurance fund, self insurance fund, and also because FEMA kind of covers us. At last typo, they cover us 90% of the losses. Um, on average, they used to do 75 uh, per percent. The other one we looked at was just for uh, typhoon, uh, uh, they call it catastrophe uh, limit, going from 100 to 50 million dollars. Um, historically, I think the biggest typhoon we incurred was either uh, Chattahan and Paka and Pongsoma. I think in that 2002, I think the maximum loss we had was close to 66 million dollars. So, um, and this current loss, we're looking at about 25 million. So when they looked at that, they say if you go from uh, 100 to 50 million dollars, it's, it's still kind of covered. It's, it's, it's reasonable. Thank you. Um, John, those, those two options that you just mentioned, are the only two changes that you would make to those contracts? Um, yes, well, currently, what we, uh, as we know right now from the London market, um, um, the um, reduction for 100 to $50 million is, uh, might give us the biggest reduction. But we're still um, contemplating if the premium is going to be like a significant, um, we did increase the deductible from 10 million to 20 million dollars. But we're thinking just, if you're just taking these uh, sub for 100 to 50, we might achieve 7.1. Uh, if not, we'll have to take those two uh, options. But this, this may just be a technical no question, but it, What's pending is an approval of the proposed contract. But if we're not going to approve the proposed contract because the proposed contract has higher than what we're approving. So are we approving just a premium amount? And you're just going to try, John, to negotiate what you need to to get it to be within that, that 7.1? Yes, we're trying to meet the so we want to punch, uh, award a contract for air missions to place to find the insurance you know, tonight and also um, uh, allow us flexibility to take the options to reduce it below uh, 7.1. So as long as you get the 7.1 approval, then that's enough? Yes. Okay. And then Fred, I just wanted to mention in the proposed order, I don't see anything in there about um, opening a docket or self-insurance, at least not the one in my, I don't have the uh, updated order. In the, in the determination, the PUC does basically agree to say that the document should be though should it probably should be an ordering provision though. Seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Mr. if I may take the opportunity to introduce our new legal counsel. Um, right here. And I'm not going to pronounce her last name. I'm still not used to it. Her first name is Marian. Marian's last name is Alice Chuck. Easier to pronounce than to spell. Yeah. It's not hard to pronounce. So. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, so we'll be working on our petitions uh, in the future. Together, of course, Teresa, between the two of them, the one 
comes from the email or something like that. So thank you very much. Thank you again very much for the insurance. You're welcome. John, what are we at with our capacity now? Uh, capacity now we're at 252. Uh, demand tonight will probably be around 245, 247. So as you can see, we're close, but I think uh, we're trying to make sure that we don't take anybody out tonight for Halloween. Okay. <laughs> so, and what's the status on the Greco unit? Uh, the Greco unit is still pending in terms of the approval of the permit of you know, the uh, award of that contract. We're still going through that process. Uh, we did. Good news is Cabras 2 has been running now straight for two weeks. Nobody continues to run. Number one, of course, has been running for over two months now. So if, if uh, those two can just stay running, even at a reduced load, it gives us time to uh, recover the rest of the capacity. So we're going to have to take Deliru 1 first, then Deliru 2, then Machete 2, and do all this maintenance that we have to catch up with. So, where are we now with the new plans? Uh, right now, the target date is uh, January 2026. I'm working to reduce that to sometime late uh, December, late uh, 2025. But that's at best case. Uh, they have started up, they have ordered the materials, from my understanding, and then they will continue to work uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the process. Although, of course, it starts to build up financial difficulties, things that weren't planned for and all of that, but they continue to move forward. And this, this is to clarify, because uh, this is uh, the vendor proponent, right? So we don't have to work about the insurance. That, that's correct. We don't. And so, because part of all of this savings that were worked out and plan is also going to help to pay for the power plan, including the fuel oil savings that are going to occur so that we will have a reduction to the customers. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, Commissioner Gonzalez, you have the floor. Thank you. 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 Thank you.